It's a time of the year where we all tend to get reflective and maybe take a closer look at our relationships with others and well, taking on some of the things that bother us about our relationship with others head on. Now, last month we showed you how forgiveness can make a significant difference in how you live and how you feel day to day. On this month's issue of Martha Stewart's Whole Living Magazine, Emerson College professor and nationally recognized ethicist Jeffrey Seglin writes about forgiveness and letting go from an ethical point of view. And we're pleased to have Jeffrey from one of the best institutions of higher learning in the world back with us this morning. A little Emerson love there. <laughs> Jeffrey, you know, we've got to throw that in when you can. Let's talk about forgiveness in general here. Uh, if it's something that's bothering you on either side, how far should you go in seeking forgiveness? You know, you, you can't. You should go as far as you want to to sort of cleanse your soul to feel good about it, but you can't force somebody to forgive you. The worst, it's, it's almost worse to sort of nag somebody and say, you must forgive me, you must forgive me, I'm seeking forgiveness, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You can't force somebody to forgive you if, if they're not willing to. And so it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a two-person exchange then. I mean, you, can, can it be enough to say simply, look, I'm seeking forgiveness, right. and should that be enough to sort of it should well be the guilt, if you will? It should be, and at some point, um, all you can hope to do is let go of that. Um, the guilt that you have. You, you've sought forgiveness, you've tried to make amends, you've, you're, you're willing to be held accountable for what you did, and, and you're asking for forgiveness. And that, that should be enough. You can't force somebody to, to forgive you if they don't want to. And, and if you are one of those people, for whatever reason, you, you, you can't forgive somebody, is that ever okay? Because, it, it, you know, it's, it's about letting go. Right. And if you can't find it a way simply to forgive and you're not letting go, then that... Well, that's... it's a decision people can make. I mean, you can decide to hold a grudge for the rest of your life and... and a lot Many of people, people do. do. <laughs> Many right, people right. do. The, the question you have to ask yourself is that really the person you want to become, where that eats at you every day? And, you know, there's the scene in that old movie Diner where they, the guy held the grudge until he sees the guy online years right, later right, and he just right. punches him in the face, and the guy has no idea what it's about. <laughs> do you really want to be that guy? And, and, and that, it, it takes a bigger toll on you to hold that grudge then it, it gives over power to the person who did the wrong in the first place, and, and, and there's really no value to that. But from where you're coming from here, it's no matter what part of the sort of forgiveness scale you're on, either seeking forgiveness or being in the position to grant forgiveness, it is simply about the benefits of letting go. It is, yes, and coming to a resolution that you can't undo what's done. All you can do is, is to sort of put it to rest, reach some kind of resolution, and move on. If you do have some of these issues with, with, uh, with forgiveness, either somebody did something that's really bothering you, or you think you did something to somebody else, um, the simple question here is to ask yourself, why does this bother me right. so much, right? Right. That, that is the question. And often, I think what happens is the person who you think did something to you often doesn't know. And so people tend not to, it becomes the elephant in the room where you, you know they did something wrong to you or you assume they did something wrong to you, but they don't know because you haven't told them. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it takes just discussing with someone to, to say to them, look, you know, what you did really bothered me. Um, I hope there's a way we can do this differently in the, in the past and, and, than in the past. And, and that goes a long way towards sort of um, mending fences. I mean, it's really tough to ask forgiveness of someone when they don't know they did anything wrong to you. Right. And we always assume that people think like we do. From an ethical point of view, I've always been curious about this. Let's say it's a politician who apologizes for something, but they don't apologize until they get caught, uh, as opposed for coming out in advance and saying, look, right. I've done something here. Right. Um, does that absolve them? I guess ultimately it's up to the well, eyes of the public, but it, from a personal it is point. A, it is up to the eyes of the public. You can never really get into the soul of someone to see how genuine sure. their apology is, but <laughs> sort of, um, you know, contrition by public apology is, is a cynical approach. So if it's not gen a genuine apology... It doesn't really it doesn't really absolve them. I mean, to, to truly be apologetic for something, um, it, it comes before you get caught. Right. Um, and even if you get caught and then apologize, it doesn't rid you of the fact that you should be held accountable for your actions. Right. I mean, all the things we talk about for forgiveness, we can forgive somebody for doing something, but if they broke the law in doing that, that doesn't mean we don't think they should be held accountable for that and, and pay the price. And is it fair to level an amount of sincerity in someone's apology or the mere fact that they are apologizing is enough? I think the mere fact that they're apologi apologizing is enough because we can never know how sincere someone is. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, you, people are wonderful at faking sincerity. Um, all we can do is take them at their word and, and recognize that this is the person that did whatever mm -hmm. was egregious to us in the first place. And if you are uh, one of those people who maybe somebody wronged you and they apologize, you accept the apology, but you're, you feel your relationship with that person is forever changed or different or not the same, that's okay, isn't it? It is okay. I mean, everything, every interaction we have with people, positive or negative, defines our relationship with that person. So it, it tells us how to navigate with that person. Mm -hmm. We know if that person's under pressure, they might do something that's not particularly to our liking. So we know that going forward. So it's helpful in sort of defining that. It shouldn't, we shouldn't totally forget what happened. There's a difference between for, forgetting and forgiving. Mm -hmm. 
forgive and forget often go hand right, in hand right, in, right. in a lot of circles. It's but, tougher to forget. But at the same time, in doing so, even though you may that uh, relationship may be irreparably harmed, there still is the benefit that you receive physically and emotionally from forgiving, even though you may not feel the same way about that person. Right, and I think I think what ends up happening often is the person who 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 has to forgive the person who holds the grudge even though they've been wronged who pays more of a toll emotionally because carrying that around with them creates tension sure. and anxiety right. and everything and the person who did wrong in the first place doesn't right. pay that price at all so the, if you're if you're letting go becomes really important from an emotional standpoint too and a physical standpoint uh, and we're short on time last question but if you feel like you've been wronged by somebody um, should you actually from an ethical point of view approach them and say hey you owe me an apology no I think you should say to that person this is what happened. I feel. I feel that this was what happened. This is. This is why I think you should tell me what was going on with you. But you can't force anybody to apologize. I think you do. If you want some kind of apology, you, you owe it to them to tell them what your feelings are in response to what they did. Yeah. Very interesting topic. Interesting approach too. And you can find out more about that in Whole Living Magazine. It's on newsstands now. And to see Jeffrey's article and for more information on ethical perspectives, you can visit his website at jeffreyseglin.com. Check it out. You'll be glad you did. Jeffrey, thanks Great. for coming Thank in. You. My best Thank everybody at Emerson too, Thank please. You. All right. Good to take a